go 4.30 on May 25th. Uh, and we're off again. A lot more wind today. so we're deeper into rush hour but uh, rather tame uh, but then again uh, because of CBD uh, we're still in our lockdown mode so one would expect the uh, sort of call it steamer or a limited um, rush hour traffic rather appropriate that the liberal left emerges from Voltaire. This includes the entire activist bit. Because Voltaire doesn't know what he's talking about. He contra contradicts himself on a routine basis. But then again, but then again, much of the work is in his own. And th th I think this is where, you know, well, well yes, okay, if you want to talk about it in, in philosophical sense, that there is no difference between the right and the left. There is no Republican Party, there is no... Uh, Democrat Party, it's all one thing. Yeah, okay. But that's a, that's only if you go back to the Holy Roman Empire and the creation of uh, basically, uh, well, let's call it the Freemason ranks. See, in Freemasonry, all the sides live together. There is no difference between the sides. This is why you have the chest, you have the black and the white. You have, the, the, matter of fact, the Hegelian dialectic comes out of, uh, out of these understandings of Freemasonry. And you run into this because not, it's not as Freemasonry, but you have Newton and Leibniz being what are called natural philosophers. And these philosophers often mixed uh, a lot of what they call metaphysics within their physics. So the metaphysics is never, ever divorced from the history of science in terms of the natural philosophies. This sort of separation 
emerges and, and becomes present only with the, the advent of Voltaire. Voltaire se separates them, sort of, because the Cartesians have done the same thing anyways. And this is where I have to go back and go in and do a little more deep research because Blanc brings it back in again. In other words, Voltaire is the absolute philosopher who talks about nothing. Where all the scientists, what we would call the scientists, all had metaphysics within their work. The question is, why is this and why, the, why is the view so limited uh, in terms of what we currently have? And I think is in many ways the view isn't that limited. It just is limited in terms of the public perspective, in terms of what the public sees and what they're taught in school. And because in terms of the research, I can very easily go out and take a look and see what Newton and Leibniz actually did. So it's not a mystery what Newton and Leibniz did. It's just simply not talked about. This is what I'm talking about the difference between, you know, some of the forbidden knowledge isn't necessarily hit, isn't necessarily uh, sort of hidden, locked, sort of locked away, but rather it's sort of misplaced and uh, not as easily, uh, not as easily accessible as it would have been if we were out, in the, if out more in the public, if we were, if we were called advertised. <laughs> so basically, some of the forbidden information is actually sort of a not obvious information in libraries and uh, points of access that are not uh, readily available to the public. And this is where you have to go into uh, uh, the definitions here. When I talk about readily available to the public, that doesn't necessarily mean it's hidden in public archives. It's hidden in archives in terms of that, that are not accessible to the public. I mean, it's just this is where people typically don't go. So it's not readily readily available to the public because these aren't typical archives. But it's it's still there. It's still not what we call hidden. It's not locked away.
of the work, the research work, is tedious. It's, it requires long hours of studying, long hours of reading. There's a lot of quiet involved. Well, not for me, it's not necessarily quiet. I always have the, t the, t the TV cartoons on the background. But. <laughs> is for hours at a time. And then of course, after you've done your work, you've got to sort of think about it, mull the different thoughts and ideas over in your mind. So, there are always issues to work on. behind an ice cream truck. I have money but I don't feel like stopping for ice cream. I've got ice cream at home. Of course, teenagers are too cool for ice cream. <laughs> Although they're all probably, probably dying on the inside. It's about 10 o'clock in the evening, uh, 22 hours into the 25th day of May, and we're off once again. Oh. Listening back to uh, what I say as I uh, vlog in the editing process, you got to mull things over again and adjust the presentation because again these things uh, we're, we're still within notes and even when something is presented that's not necessarily the end of it so when we talk about Lionel, LeBron of Lionel Nation we're now into Voltaire and one can in terms of a cross-reference one can cross-reference Lionel LeBron uh, with uh, Voltaire and even bring in uh, Dostoevsky, uh, in terms of completing the view, Dostoevsky, Newton, and uh, uh, Leibniz, uh, and even uh, Maxwell Planck. Uh, these are all sort of interconnections, and then we can move forward to the equation of the universe. Excuse me. And then further out to uh, Hubble Space Telescope, and then from there to uh, the uh, CERN and the Higgs boson. And this is in the nature of knowledge and what people know and what knowledge is within a person's sphere. And this is, this, this is what puts Lionel LeBron in the sphere with the conspiracy theorists, is that he just doesn't go deep enough. Even though he doesn't consider himself to be a conspiracy theorist, that he's more of an analyst. Well, the thing is, he hasn't gone deep enough yet. There's still a lot more for him to see than he's actually seen. And this is what puts him, him, him where he is. And it doesn't say, well, why, why bother listening to Lionel or watching him or whatever? And that's because you need different points of view. So let's take, uh, you know, Joe Rogan.
a lot of people, when they get into show business, where they become popular, they can be sort of have their views adjusted based on In other words, you never bite the hand that feeds you. So, if you're working for a particular patron, this is the truth. This is true with Voltaire as well. He made sure that he didn't anger the patrons who were paying, who were paying his bills. And what made him famous and attracted his his benefactors was the fact that he was illicit. So one of the things he doesn't do is make sure that he becomes legal at any point in time, really. I mean, there is a brief point of legality, but he, he moves, and this is what's noted, he moves to uh, remove himself from the situation. Uh, and this is what gives uh, Voltaire his claim to fame, is that he was illegal. He was a contrarian. He was anti-establishment. But if you sit down and look at his actual work, you realize there's nearly not much there. I think I'm going to probably end up drafting this bus for a bit. That's okay. I'm only doing about 40, so it's doing the same. But Lionel had, even though, know, and this is the thing with Voltaire, doing the research on Voltaire, is you have to go to other sources, not just simply a single source, in order to understand what, who Voltaire was and and what he was actually saying. In other words, there's an analysis to this. An analysis uh, is a fair bit of library work. It's not something that occurs uh, instantaneously. that this is what a deep dive research is. A deep dive re research is, is seeing how to relate one thing to the next, one topic to, the, to another. And all in some ways, because this is what you do it as a nerd, this is how you understand some of the current events today, and you bring in some of the historical factors, again, it's, it's through this cross-reference. And so you can use Lyon Lebron as a point or a marker But if you go back, go out and look at other uh, sort of pundits on either side of his uh, political spectrum, so if you type his political spectrum where he is in terms of what he says, go look at others who do the same thing and then make a comparison to what they say. That's the analysis. It's not one point or another. It's all the points together. And this is, this is the calculus. Calculus is the summation of all the points, the minute points, the, 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 the fractional points over a particular area. 
So that can form a path. There's a path intervals. This is how they do for CERN for uh, the Higgs boson. The uh, particle collision creates a path. They uh, work on an equation using math equations and find out what the what the path of the uh, of the uh, of the particle is. And this is how they type things in terms of what type is this and what type is that. Boson, neutron, uh, neutrino, uh, gluon, uh, quark, anti-quark. And this is because these are all done on calculations equations. There are those who believe that the equations are ultimate, that they are the ultimate truth, and can predict everything. That these are the these are the predictions or the projections within COVID. But you go all the way back to Fibonacci to sort of see this, that they have never, in terms of prediction, have gotten the predictions correct. So you can place an entire history on this. And this was because you're talking about Fibonacci, you're getting into uh, the sort of popularized here, area, era, or, or area. Of Da Vinci and the Da Vinci Code. What provides a particular interest, and I made a mistake. I didn't read. Uh, I didn't uh, take the. Uh, I didn't take uh, erase the clips when I needed when I was supposed to. So I'm gonna have to make an editing error when I get back to my place. Uh, I should have said editing correction. Anyways, this is how everything sort of connects. There's still a lot more work to do on Voltaire, which means there'll be a lot more, a lot more uh, discussions to come along, because this is our, these are our notes. A vlog is a note. It's like a notebook, and this is where a scientist, such as myself, records my journal. This is my journal. This is how. I mull things over in my mind, I talk about things and bring them up into a discussion as into our conversation that we have here, and this is how uh, thoughts are developed for, 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 uh, further, or brought forward, that's the more uh, precise term. The term I was thinking about, how things kind of flub. 